Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You can do it, Jack. I'm with you, mate. Got the 20 kilos? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's well done. Thank you for your vote of support. What side do you want? <laughs> I want him to succeed. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everyone right to go? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming. Sorry to keep you waiting for a few minutes. Um, it is great to be here today with uh, Police Minister Jack Dempsey and uh, the Commissioners of the Fire Service, Lee Johnson and uh, Ian Stewart, the Commissioner of the Queensland Police Service, to uh, essentially release and uh, respond to issues surrounding the Kilty Review of uh, police and emergency services in Queensland. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the government has commissioned a number of reviews in various parts of government. Uh, we had engaged uh, former Federal Police Commissioner Mick Kilty to undertake a review of uh, police and emergency services areas and uh, that review commenced back in January this year. Uh, Mr Kilty has provided his final report to Cabinet which was considered yesterday and Cabinet has formally uh, you know, adopted the report and is now providing it for the people of Queensland to, to see. Uh, we intend to uh, respond uh, by implementing as much as possible the recommendations that Mr Kilty has come up with. I say that up front today. There will be some variations of course, but uh, we intend to be absolutely scrupulous to the spirit of what he's saying uh, and uh, we intend to make sure that we get positive change in police and emergency services matters in Queensland. I want to thank uh, Mick Kilty and his team for undertaking this important work for the people of Queensland. It is a very important work and I know a lot of effort has gone into it and we think it's a very solid report. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of what we're trying to achieve, it's this. We want the best public service in the nation. Well, as part of that, we want the best uh, police service, we want the best fire service, we want the best emergency service for Queenslanders, and of course we want to do the best, best for people in our health system. That's the objective. The objective is not about um, uh, sort of uh, changing uh, the, the head count. The objective is not about saving money, it's about doing better. And what uh, Mr Kilty has identified is a number of important structural reforms in terms of organisation, but also internal process reforms uh, and managerial and administrative reforms that will actually give us a better service for Queenslanders. That's what the objective is all about. Some of the key things that we'll see uh, uh, organisational change are as follows. Firstly, the transfer of the Queensland Ambulance Service out of the current department uh, into uh, Queensland Health. 85% of their work, of course, is with Queensland Health. The transfer of the Queensland Corrective Services area, the jails, to the Department of Justice and the Attorney General. The abolition of the Department of Community Safety and Emergency Management Queensland and creation of a new Department of Fire and Emergency Services, which will have the urban and rural <coughs> fire service within it. And the creation of two new roles, a CEO of Portfolio Business, which is essentially a shared services between the fire service and the police service, dealing with things like IT, uh, HR, IR issues, um, communications, uh, etc. Now that will be uh, providing support to both those organisations. And finally, an Inspector General of Emergency Management to actually constantly challenge the new organisation to make sure that it is best positioned to look after Queenslanders in the case of natural disasters. Um, the report has cost $590,000. It's money well spent in terms of the outcomes we expect going forward. There are 129 recommendations and 341 pages. But I stress again, this is a blueprint to deliver a better uh, service for Queenslanders across those important areas. And I'll now ask the Minister to comment. Thank you, Premier. This is a, uh, a once in a generational change for the police and uh, fire and emergency services across Queensland. This breaks down the silos of the departments and uh, meets community expectations to have the best police fire and emergency services, not just in Australia but in all of the world. We already have a magnificent uh, reputation but this is taking it into the next 20, 30 years ahead. When we first uh, commissioned Mr Kilty, and I'd just like to uh, thank him for a magnificent report, a report that, that is, uh, is uh, boots and all in relation to identifying uh, issues right across 
the whole of the portfolio and his team of, uh, of Ian and Alison who did a magnificent job uh, over the last uh, couple of months. But particularly the emphasis on a portfolio that will now have emergency service workers a commissioner for police and a commissioner for, for fire and emergency services leading the operational responsibilities to meet the community expectations in relation to Queensland not just being a great state uh, with great opportunities but a great state that is safe and has a, a safety of its community and its streets and as well as its response to disasters and emergencies at its core heart uh, to ensure that uh, we are the best of the best. Mr Kilty obviously looked at areas from structure to uh, coordination, cooperation, uh, obviously uh, the, uh, the uh, connectivity between the departments to make sure that we have the proper decision makers in place. We've seen these changes as the Premier just alluded to from uh, <coughs> Queensland Ambulance which will now, uh, sorry, uh, Queensland Ambulance Service, which will now uh, go over to Queensland Health, uh, having its, uh, its, its own identity as such, the same as it is uh, previously under the Department of Community Safety. It will now, instead, instead of having that Director General, it will be under the Director General of Queensland Health, and it will still uh, remain with its own Commissioner in that uh, particular field. Uh, correctional Services now going under the, uh, the Attorney General's in Justice. When it comes to, uh, to corrections, we, we're the only state uh, that uh, corrections is, uh, is actually under emergency services. So it's a correct fit to go under justice. In most states it's either under justice or, or a separate. The, obviously with uh, EMQ, Emergency Management Queensland, will now uh, be modified into the Department uh, of Queensland Fire and Emergency Services to make sure that uh, we have a frontline response that uh, sends a clear message that uh, the departments are working together. Recently, you would have just uh, seen last week, uh, we made nearly a half, this government made nearly a half a billion dollars commitment to the government wireless network for the first time allowing police, ambulance and fire services to actually be able to talk to each other. This is the 21st century and uh, this government's getting on making sure that we have the technological advancements uh, to take uh, these services into the future. And uh, what we've also seen is uh, a, a portfolio of business uh, which will have its own CEO which will directly be able to look after the business sector to allow the two commissioners, that paramilitary style uh, section, to get on with uh, protecting all Queenslanders. I must uh, also uh, say that uh, the, uh, the implementation uh, with the steering committee uh, will uh, take a number of months. We want to make sure we do it step by step to get it right and we want to make sure that we get through the storm and disaster period and, uh, and any, any concerns in that regard and have uh, the rest of the full implementation uh, by, uh, by mid next year. But uh, you'll see Queensland Ambulance move over by the end of October. You'll see uh, corrections to justice by the end of this year and uh, you will see the, uh, the steering committee uh, step through the different uh, recommendations, all 129 of those recommendations, to ensure that uh, they uh, are, are uh, implemented as best as possible. Over to you. Freddie, are you concerned about the, the, sort of the lack of cooperation that the new <coughs> team um, mentions in the report within the QPS? Well, I, I am, and that's why we're committing to uh, make the necessary changes. Well, I did. Uh, Mick Kilty is uh, someone who has uh, you know, enormous experience uh, in this area, and I knew that he would uh, get right into the, uh, the nitty gritty as well as the broad strategic sort of issues. It's important that we do. And look, he's pulled no punches in the report, pulled no punches whatsoever. Uh, but that's, uh, that's really important if you to get the best result and fix things up. So we draw a line in the sand today and we say that was what mm. happened previously, well, that was yesterday. Today, there's a, going forward, there's going to be a very positive change that uh, will address the concerns he's had. How much is it going to cost to shift all those departments around? We don't believe there's going to be uh, a significant cost. Um, this is, you know, most of these changes are just about saying to people, well, you worked over there, now you're working over here and you've got a new... Um, you know, boss that you might answer to in terms of shared services. And I stress the objective, you know, you're going to ask me about headcount, look, I'll say right now, uh, we, this is not about downsizing. 
that there is there is no objective there whatsoever. This is about putting people in the right places uh, so they answer in the right way and deliver the right services. So it really doesn't come at cost. Uh, having said that, in terms of the budgets for things like the police service and the fire service, they, they are getting more money, more funding. There's more police on the beat. There's this new digital radio network which we're, we're providing. So we are resourcing up those uh, people who protect Queenslanders. Do you expect any senior level personnel changes as a result of the report? Oh, there will be senior level changes, not with these two gentlemen who we have the <laughs> utmost confidence in, I, I, I hasten to add. But I mean, we have to go and select someone to head up uh, some of these new uh, well, a number of these new positions. And uh, you know, the current uh, people who are there are, are obviously in you know, the first sort of line candidates to get some of those positions. But particular positions, obviously, are the CEO of the portfolio business, the shared services area. Uh, so we're going to have to select someone to do that, to provide services to these two organisations jointly. Um, we also, I think, uh, should comment on the very important role uh, answering to uh, Commissioner Lee Johnson, which is the, the, the person who's heading up the, the rural fire service and those emergency volunteers. We need the right person doing that job as well. Does the government have the money to make the sort of technological changes report recommends? Uh, we believe we do, and again, you know, the, the, the record shows that uh, we are resourcing up the QFRS, the QPS, and the ambulance service. Now, contrary to what you've heard from unions, there's been more money, more resources. Just again on police, now there's 360 more police on the beat than there were 18 months ago. There's a police helicopter that's already there. There's another police helicopter coming. There's a half a billion dollar commitment to di secure digital radio technology over the next 15 years that, that's, that's starting to roll out right now. I mean, those are important initiatives. And uh, the recommendation on iPads and um, yeah. portable devices, we take that very <coughs> seriously and we're going to make that happen. Do you know how much it will cost? I can't give you a figure today, but we'll, we'll endeavour to get you that and for you. Or but, you but, also, number? Uh, but also what will happen is the steering committees will work through each item to get the best, because you've got to, you've got to imagine now is we're going to have a CEO portfolio business for no no longer will you have departments working in silos, doing their own IT, doing their own uh, different business plans. They'll be brought together to be able to have connectivity right across the whole of the department. And just I'd like to say is that question there before, is with this, this report in no way is sugar-coated. You've seen other reports and reviews over periods of times giving the same recommendations, but other governments have just let it go into, into la-la land. And uh, I really mm. commend uh, Mick Guilty and his and his team for uh, having the courage and uh, and the tenacity to be able to uh, to look at the overall portfolio aspects in relation to police and emergency services and this will give us the best outcome going forward and it'll get us the best uh, connectivity in relation to uh, ICT even today as a first start. It's the first time a report has been presented to Parliament that has come uh, through, uh, through, through the internet. If you haven't got a hard copy report. And this is the way of the future, and this is the way that we have to embrace technology right across the department. Technological advances will they work in rural and regional areas? Oh, look, uh, certainly will. I think, uh, as for me, as an officer, of, uh, you know, of, uh, previously in the police for 20 years, I'd experience on the ground. I think, uh, for whether it be from police or fire and emergency services, we're certainly problem problem solvers. The only, the only difference now is you've got a government that understands the needs of your technology on the ground to make sure that our frontline services get the best output instead of being able to have additions of, uh, of corporate services and, uh, and I think it is... Well, connectivity management. at roadsides, if you, you know, you have iPads on the roadside, those sorts of things... Well, I mean, up. last time I... Well, mm. it's a fair question, mm. and but last time I checked, there's very comprehensive coverage these days uh, in terms of... Uh, you know, 3G, 4G networks. Mm. I mean, police and emergency people are, in the main, working where the community are, and that's where the, the telecommunications companies have provided coverage. Mm. Um, with the government wireless network, we're very conscious about the need to provide great coverage, and uh, particularly we can provide you details about how there's going to be very good coverage in the areas that have been selected, mm. such as uh, the Greater Brisbane area, then South East Queensland, Cairns, etc. Mm. You know, there will be, you know, very good coverage, indeed better coverage than the current analogue system that's being used 
and I'll just use that as an example. Is the board very critical of the police, things like the lack of engagement by the QPS, the lack of connectivity by the QPS, they're not team players, they don't acknowledge themselves as part of public service? What do you think about those? Well, Mr Kildy's made that, uh, made that call and uh, he you know, has put that on the table. Uh, I, I guess that's something that we're all going to have to take on board, oh, and we will, and we will. Uh, I just want to reiterate, though, that I have every confidence in the Commissioner, um, and I just say I know Queenslanders have every confidence in the man that uh, helped them through some very dark days over the last two and a half years, you know, cyclones and floods and the like. They know that Ian Stewart is a Commissioner is uh, the bloke who actually got them through those sorts of things, helping the former government. Uh, so really, you know, OK, Kilty's made the comment, but I'm sure the Commissioner will address it and we need to then, you know, deal with these things and move on. Can, can, can we ask you? a wage cut, given also what Mr Kilty has said in here, that um, while salaries and wages paid for doing core business might have dropped in line with the demand, it hasn't happened, allowances have gone up, but the base salary hasn't dropped? I'm not sure I follow the question Maybe. there. Basically, just says in here that um, allowances for firefighters have gone up, but the base salary has not. And he seems to be hinting to the fact that they might be overpaid given that demand for some of their services has dropped. Well, I'll say this that the, the fire uh, service people do a terrific job, they put their life on the line as the police do. They deal with, um, you know, obviously very dangerous fire situations, chemical spills and the like. They're cutting people out of cars. Um, you know, they, they do the swift water rescue. I think they deserve every penny they get. And again, this isn't about um, going after paying conditions. It's about actually a restructure and a realignment of how these things work. Um, there is another matter that I should, probably should address, which I, I think probably is a more relevant one that you might want to raise, and that's the issue of the overtime the police were getting sitting mining speed cameras. And my position is this. It is, it is ultimately not good use of highly qualified, highly trained police officers sitting there mining cameras. And it was a financially um, uh, you know, rewarding thing for people to do, but to have someone sitting mining a camera wasn't good use of their skills and expertise when they should have been out fighting, fighting crime. And I acknowledge that, there are over, that they were receiving overtime. But I'll say something else. It's my view that they're well paid. They are well paid. Their, their pay bears up very well compared to police in other states. And I hate to see people doing large amounts of overtime when they arguably should be there with their, with their families and friends enjoying you know, their well-earned rest. Now, there are other opportunities for overtime. Police specials, uh, you know, for example, are, are well sought after for all sorts of community organisations, events. I know that there are those opportunities, but relying on overtime from mining police cameras really ultimately isn't something that anyone really should support. Well, just, 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 can you just answer for us? A lot of this sort of is behind the scenes type you know, restructuring and shuffling. The mums and dads that are at home ring up and want a police car there when they, they want it. What does this mean for them? No, thank you for the question. And uh, certainly the report comments on the uh, the great work that our people do every day, right across emergency services, not just the police, uh, but right across all emergency services, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, the report has raised a range of issues and certainly uh, has been critical of some of the aspects uh, during the uh, compilation of this report, but I would remind everyone that at the time the review was taking place, we were already starting our journey of change within the Queensland Police Service. We were undergoing probably the most significant change in the last 25 years in terms of our restructure. And we welcome the Kilty Report. I, in fact, I think it actually affirms many of the things that we've been looking at and asking for for a number of years. And I'm very proud to say that we now have a government that allows that open debate. And certainly, we will be going to government asking for their support for implementation of many of those uh, recommendations. Well, just get you a policeman when you ring up and need a policeman at 2 o'clock in the morning. Absolutely, they may be getting uh, the same service as they did yesterday, uh, but over time that service will improve. I think everyone knows my vision is uh, fo to focus on frontline policing, to give our frontline police the resources they need. And uh, in fact, the Minister only recently announced the move to mobility, mm. uh, the trial that will start to roll out next month. And in fact, uh, if some of these things were easy, every police department in, in Australia would have them. Um, and certainly in the area of mobility, we'll be one of the first to have uh, smartphone technology, tablet 
technology that actually allows connectivity with our primary uh, computer systems. Um, we'll be right at the forefront of that and, and I thank the government again for their support in this regard. The report refers to the blue iron curtain between the police and other aspects of government. Is that a cultural issue that needs to be addressed? Uh, certainly I'll take the, uh, the issue on board. But um, the review that we did and the restructure we uh, undertook over the first six months of this year was uh, internal to the Queensland Police Service. It was about that journey of change that needs to occur in any large organisation that's basically been stable for a long period of time. This review, the review undertaken by uh, the Police and uh, Emergency Services review team, uh, now looks across the portfolio. And that's the difference. Uh, we now will work very, very closely with uh, our other sister and brother agencies to get that connectivity, to get that greater op interoperability and, in, fa and in fact, integration uh, that's necessary uh, to allow the effectiveness and efficiencies to occur, particularly in that corporate area, while our front lines uh, are given the resources that they need to do their job right across um, all of the uh, portfolio areas. I'm, I'm sorry, could you... Yeah. Uh, how many civilians we need to do the non-frontline jobs? Oh, well, well, sorry. Oh, perhaps, well, just, just with the camp, well, yep. that remains to be seen. That's why there's this information uh, committee um, uh, led by my Director General John Grayson with uh, the commissioners on it, uh, Brigadier Greg Bilton from the Australian Defence Force. And they've got to work through these issues. But in terms of like cameras, I mean, mm. we've made no secret of this. You know, we will be calling for tenders for people to put the private sector to provide that that service and it will be done through the Department of Transport. Premier, you love concern that some experience officers may look elsewhere in terms of the job if they don't have that extra income of, of, of operating the cameras and providing escorts because a lot of them use that as a, a way to, I know you said that they're mm. paid well, but could, could they look elsewhere if that kind of, if that sudden cut for their income? Well I certainly hope they don't uh, and again I, I just think you know what we're doing is being done, uh, has been done in other states. I mean. Uh, you know, there are other states where the cameras are operated uh, by the private sector under the supervision of either the police or the transport departments, um, and you know we're just moving to that. I, again, I can't, I just can't reiterate, reiterate enough. It's just not appropriate having highly qualified police officers sitting there, babysitting a camera. It's just not good use of their time. You know. Sorry, just on another topic, the Brisbane underground tunnel situation. But, well, before we before we go there, yeah. um, shall we finish any of the final questions on this? Do you think yeah. that the ambulance officers will be very happy about working for the Queensland? Well, that's a really good question, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some who uh, will probably express an opinion uh, otherwise. But I'll say this: that uh, Mr. Kilty did uh, consult quite extensively with the senior people in the QAS. Uh, he also uh, sought to engage with the unions as well, and I believe he mm. did. Yeah. And I don't think there'll be any surprises there that this is being uh, implemented in this way. Uh, it has, by the way, been the subject of previous recommendations. Um, I think the big concern for the ambulance service has probably now been dealt with. If we go back 18 months ago when we took office, ambulances were uh, out there in queues, in droves outside our major hospitals. As you will have heard me say before, we now have all but ended ramping. We now have the best performing emergency mm. departments in the nation. And th that means that I think there should be some confidence in QIS that they as a team with Queensland Health will work much better together in this way. And I stress what uh, the Minister said, QIS is going in as a separate standalone uh, unit or department within health. They're, 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 it's just moving across. So the Commissioner will be then answering through to the, the, um, you know, the Minister, to Lawrence Springboard. So, so that they're all going That's across, right. they're going across as an entity for the, the line, for the line ambulance officer, they should see absolutely no difference whatsoever. But we'll get better coordination and uh, working between ambulance service and in hospitals down the track. They'd be paid by Queensland Health, can the payroll system cope? Um, their pay arrangements are integral to them as well. So they have their own, so they'll be a separate little unit mm. within, within health. And so I, I think they can be very confident mm. they're not going to have those sorts of problems. They'd be well, I'm glad you raised that, they'd be well forgiven for being worried about that, but it, they go as an entity. You know, with their own structure, no changes there.
Can I, can I just, just say there is, as well, is just to, just to reiterate, uh, Russell Bowles, the Commissioner of Queensland Ambulance Service, is a remarkable Commissioner. When, in, when you think that he went from districts to regions within a matter of weeks and aligned with Queensland Health Boards, uh, the pathway for, uh, for uh, Queensland Ambulance, obviously as the Commissioner alluded to, 85% of their work is, is linked to Queensland Health, but also their training, their educational pathways are predominantly linked more to Queensland Health than any other department. And this is an exciting time. I've spoken to the, the unions as well about these particular areas and they see it as a way of uh, highlighting the, the great importance in relation to uh, our, uh, our, our advanced paramedics mm. and, and the way that they go about their work. No longer is it a, is a transportation taking people from A to B. It is that care, that professionalism mm. that they get within the ambulances. I just wanted to... Uh, yeah. sorry. So are these not the best person, people to do wide load escorts? Who is? It's dangerous work. Oh, I don't know if the Commissioner yeah. might want to comment on that one, you? Yeah. No, thank you for that question. Look, at the end of the day, safety is the key issue. The, the safety of the motoring public, the safety of the community. Nothing will be done without making that the primary consideration in any, uh, in any uh, submission that's made to the government uh, about uh, wide load escorts out there. Uh, certainly, this is not a, uh, an issue that can be handled lightly, and we know that. Um, but. Uh, we currently have uh, a range of, uh, of escorts happening across the state. The capacity of the police department to actually fulfil the needs of all of that is stretched and, and certainly we need to look at different ways of actually providing that service to, to the community. And Commissioner, the report suggests um, a reluctance to cooperate with the review team. Do you believe that you cooperated fully? Uh, look, I think I said before that um, the context of the review, at the timing of the review, was at a time of significant stress on our organisation just doing the restructure. We certainly, I believe, provided all of the information we were asked to. Now, it mightn't have happened immediately, but that information came forward. And I noticed uh, in the report it actually says we actually gave them more data than they actually needed. And certainly that was the case. We arranged uh, forums for them to come and meet with officers, uh, you know, to discuss uh, issues of importance. And I would suggest that um, the report in its current form wouldn't have been possible without the transparency and the ideas coming forward from the police department. So is it criticism that there was a disregard for the review team has been unfair? Uh, look, um, there will always be perceptions about this and I think the community has the right to judge uh, those sorts of uh, issues. What I'm saying very clearly is that when we were asked to provide information, we certainly did our best to provide that in a timely manner. And, and uh, you know, I had a, a person full-time working with, the, uh, with that team uh, for a number of months uh, so that they could facilitate that. Uh, there was a whole range of information that was provided uh, to, the, to the team. Um, I'm happy though if there, are, if there is evidence that there was um, specifics around people not doing their job, not providing that, um, I'm happy to take that forward. From the very first day that the review started, um, my senior management team, and I'm talking about the entire senior executive of the Queensland Police Service, were told directly by me this is going to uh, help us. Uh, we need to be very open and transparent with anything that the review team needed. But it does say that the restructure report, which was finished in January this year, wasn't given to the guilty people for six months. Um, that's not just the next day. No, absolutely. No, I know what you're talking about. Um, there is a draft report that was completed as a, an after, um, after project report that was uh, developed by our, our project team that were doing our restructure. Now, whilst the restructure didn't take place until July, certainly they, they had documented all of the issues that needed to go forward. But the components of that report that were asked for by the Kilty Review, they were provided. Um, in fact, I think we provided um, even more data, as I said, than perhaps what even the review team needed. And I, th I think it's important um, that we remember that um, having rigorous debate about these issues is a very important component of that, uh, and certainly we had that opportunity. And I think you, well, what you also have to do is take that into the context of the whole uh, of the reconstruction of the, of the overall portfolio. The fact that we had the Malone report during that time, we had uh, Oswald happening as well. And uh, I just really uh, want to uh, obviously emanate the thanks thanks of uh, of Mick Kilty of uh, providing this uh, this report to take us forward. Will there still be a commissioner correct? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Johnson, we asked Commissioner Stewart the same sort of thing, Sorry. but uh, in terms of this report, 
uh, is this going to improve the service delivery or are we going to get a, a fire engine out the front of our place or somewhere quicker now? Yeah, thanks. The uh, service response times for fire and rescue are very, very good and we compare nationally at, at the highest level. What this report has done is given us a wonderful opportunity to further grow our capability and our support to the community. So I'm very, very confident that firefighters, whether they be paid staff or our volunteers, are going to respond to this very well. Uh, I can only see uh, bigger and better things. And one thing I know after more than 30 years, if you don't, continuously improve and learn, you stagnate. And that's the last thing the people of Queensland need. Will this open the door for more equipment for you, for example, or you know, more yeah. work, better appliances and things? Yes, as part of the review, um, we'll obviously work, and uh, the Commissioner Stewart and I are on the steering committee, and part of our role will be to go through the recommendations and develop where appropriate business cases for both of us to benefit, and particularly in the ICT area, but as we've heard uh, earlier, the government also has made an outstanding investment in the government wireless network. Now, I've personally been associated with uh, uh, bidding for that, I suppose, over a couple of years, and it's just been such a great thing. That will uh, revolutionise uh, radio communications into the digital age for all of the services. So that's, uh, you can't ask for a better starter than that. Mr Newman, acknowledging what you said, it's not about downsizing. Will everyone who currently has a job just be moved over? There's going to be no That's the idea. But look, you know, look, I'll say this. You know, there are always people coming and going. So, look, I'm not going to make a guarantee to you today that there won't be a person who's working today that isn't sort of in three or four months' time. I can't make that guarantee. But I'm saying to you, this government's been really upfront about job losses. We went in there last year, we made tough decisions. The police service uh, and all departments had to do, do a range of things in terms of uh, shedding people. But that was done last year. The objective here is to actually change the structure, sort out roles, get the cooperation. It is not about shedding jobs at all. I can assure people that that is not the objective. So, so just just to reiterate, just to add to that, is you'll have the same the movement of of the uh, of the uh, the corporate side and everything else from ambulance over to their area, and from from uh, corrections over to justice as well. So that they'll they, there'll be people moving in those particular areas, and then what we'll be doing is bringing together the rest into that uh, that uh, business corporate portfolio. Sorry. And just how many drafts did cabinet see before the final report? Uh, we saw an interim report um, of. I can't recall exactly now, but um, we saw an interim report and had a briefing from Mr Kilty. Uh, it uh, was then uh, uh, the case that the report was finalised and given to us uh, for consideration on Monday. Have there been any changes? Hmm? Been any changes? Uh, not really. Um, there was some debate about some of the final organisational um, niceties in terms of how things work within the new shared services area, but that's about it. I can assure you that there's really been no, you know, at the end of the day it's his report, as you heard, he's, he's pulled no punches, he's made plenty of critical comments uh, that we need to respond to. You talked about um, old technology like fax machines still being used, do you see any of that in London, Mr Dempsey? The old faxes, yeah, yeah look, some of us some of us are comfortable <laughs> with faxes as well. <laughs> look, there, there is, there is, uh, you know, we, we saw uh, obviously with, with Oswell there in the, across the state we had to uh, go back to a, a lot of uh, uh, old technologies, uh, but uh, now with the future uh, in relation to ICT, it is going to be a marvellous opportunity, not just emergency departments, but hopefully for local governments in the future, to be to have an integrated response to disasters right across the uh, the full scope of Queensland. Mm -hmm. So whatever Mother Nature throws at us, we will have the best in the world opportunities to uh, to get the best outcome for Queenslanders and uh, all the other uh, uh, opportunities with the steering committee uh, will come together and work through them uh, one at a time to make sure we get the best in the world. Why isn't Mr Kelty here today to talk about his report? He believes his report speaks for itself. Um, he says there it is. Um, he's busy actually doing other work with, for the government right now. Public um, sector commission. Public sector uh, commission uh, and the like. Um, I want to wind this up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm conscious you've got things to do and I have too. Yeah. Um, 
you, your wager to lose 20 kilos. Oh, I'm glad you raised that because I was going to raise that too. Buffenberg yeah. is actually the obesity capital of the nation. Are you, are you setting an example for your constituents? Look, uh, I believe in, uh, in uh, setting goals, whether they be uh, work goals or private goals, and uh, I'll certainly uh, work towards uh, achieving uh, that goal. Uh, it's something that will obviously not just be a benefit to me, but uh, to my family and, uh, and my five children. And, uh, and I, I, I encourage... And I do encourage uh, other members of the community, not just Bundaberg, right around Queensland, to get on board and uh, and step up. And but do it in a, a healthy, safe way. He's got a year to do it, mind you. He has shifted. He shifted on his position last week. It was only 10 kilos. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I don't know what happened, but he suddenly said it was 20. So yeah. we'll we'll take that. We're going to have the, the the stewards come in and supervise that that finding of correct weight. And yeah. side of the way, <laughs> yeah. It's just you two. Yes, okay. and it is um, the wager involves a certain bottle of a product brewed in uh, uh, an important distillery in <laughs> yeah. Bundaberg. There you go. Yeah, so Cross River Road. Yeah. Shall we go? Shall we we'll dealt with? Shall we dealt with the, the I, I re report? Uh, the report raises the primary uh, like privacy concerns in regards to the use of personal devices by police for uh, capturing and storing information. So, in regards to the, the new devices that are coming in, that should eliminate that. What will be done to ensure the security of that information is already gathered in the hands of uh, the, the existing, existing material informal <coughs> databases? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Commissioner. No, thank you for that question, and it's certainly something that's uh, in the report and quite, um, quite properly so. We'll be looking at that and certainly looking at the legal aspects of that. We've involved the Privacy Commissioner in a range of our decisions in recent times, and, uh, and we will need to do that again uh, in relation to this particular issue. Can I just make the comment about that though, I mean, just, just to be very clear, I mean, people do things like that when the organisation they're working for is not providing the equipment, the tools to do the job. So I, I, I don't feel uh, that we should criticise police who have you know, endeavoured to collect data and use those means, you know, those informal, if you like, uh, unofficial means to do that. They've been trying to actually have a system mm. to do their job because Overall, we have let them down, you know, as, as a community by not funding them enough, perhaps, or not providing the tools to do the job. So, you know, yes, we need to deal with that, but I think it's important to recognise why that situation developed. So, mm. shall we go to any other issues of the day? Sure. Can we yeah. talk about the federal election?